Okay. Um, okay. Somebody's speaker is on. Okay. Okay. Let's look at uh, one Corinthians six. Okay. Um, so we're talking about financial stewardship, stewardship of our finances, of material things, everything. Right. Um, so let's look at one Corinthians six and verse um, verse nineteen. Right. It says, or do you not know? that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Right? That's 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. So um, 6, verse 19, it says that, um, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, God, Holy Spirit resides in you. Um, and that's one thing. The second thing is that that you were actually, you and all of us were bought at a price, right? You were purchased at a price. So we are not our own. We actually belong to the one who purchased us. Okay. So that's the greatest transaction that took place, that we were held uh, as prisoners. We were, and the ransom was paid. Uh, which was the Lord's death on the cross, um, uh, the blood sacrifice, and we belong to him. Okay, So uh, look at the um, second part of uh, verse 20. It says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Okay, Glorify God. So first of all, we belong to Jesus. So we know that he will not treat us cheaply. Right. So sometimes when we when we have some something, uh, maybe something somebody's given it to us, we can either use it or abuse it. We can use it and not take care of it. Right. So while we belong to him, we know that he will not do us harm, do us wrong. He will not treat us cheaply. He will not abuse us. Right. He's there to beautify us, give value and worth to us. Okay. So that's one thing that we see. Second thing is that it says you glorify God in your body, which means, you know, as He has given us this responsibility of stewardship, you know, taking care or glorifying God in our body or through our body is also an act of stewardship. Okay, so what is that? Which means that we take care of our bodies. We take care of ourselves. Like we don't abuse our bodies. Right? We are responsible for how we treat our body. It says glorify God. So do not use, do not abuse. I'm sorry, do not abuse your body because it belongs to Jesus. Right? And we see many such things where the Lord says, you know, first Peter, uh, second Peter, I think, where we see that we it's the flock of God. The church is the flock of God, which means the body of Christ, you know, the, the church, belongs to him. The same way we belong to him. Right? So, and here the instruction, glorify God in your body. The third thing that we see is that, okay, if the blood-washed believer belongs to Jesus, so how do I treat another person's body? How do I view another person's body? How do I treat another person's body? That is also something of importance. Right? Glorify God in your body, through your body. So how do I treat another person in whom dwells the Holy Spirit, in whom is the Spirit of the living God, who has been bought with the greatest price that has been paid, and that person's body has been purchased. So how do I treat, how do I view how do I treat? What do I think of that person? So we need to be, you know, there's something for us to think about. It also, uh, you know, is an act of stewardship. Right? Our own health, our own bodies. Uh, that it, you know, people say, you know, this is my body. I'll do what I want. No, I believe in can never do that. Right? And there's great reassurance in actually knowing that we that our body belongs to him because we know that he will never abuse he will never treat it cheaply but he will always give value and worth right to whom he has purchased with that greatest price 
Okay, so why don't we just pray, even as we uh, think on these lines, right? And maybe we can make a commitment saying, Lord, I will glorify you through my body, in my body, and I will view another person, you know, another person's body as your dwelling place, and I will never abuse another person. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this revelation, Lord, of we belong to you, Jesus, spirit, soul, and body, Lord, completely purchased, Lord, blood paid with your blood sacrifice, God. We thank you that we are not our own, but we belong to you. And so also every other person, Lord, for whom you, Lord, died, and in every other person in whom is the spirit of the living God. So enable us, Lord, Lord, give us eyes to see that, and uh, I pray that the way we treat ourselves and the way we treat others will be shaped and changed by the revelation of this truth. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Hey, today might be the last session. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. So we're um, we looking at uh, some of the um, practical things about stewardship. How can I steward... Um, so we, we looked at you know what stewardship is. Stewardship is uh, ownership. Stewardship is not ownership. Sorry, it's stewardship is actually giving oversight to what is someone else's, right? So how do I use it? How do I protect it? How do I nurture it? How do I increase it, right? So that's stewardship. So in line with that, what are some practical things that we can do? Okay, so last class I think we ended with all the you know budgeting and uh, planning that we can do. So it's not wrong to do that. It's not wrong to it's 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 not to say you know lack of faith when I budget and say okay these are the expenses for this month. Right? Okay, let's look at the third one, which is some basic guidelines for financial success. Okay, the third point. Okay, so this is the reason why we are studying this, why we are learning about this, because it is about a practical way of stewarding what God has entrusted to us. Okay, what are some things? Okay, first thing is very practical, very uh, I mean it's it's common knowledge general knowledge is this spend less than you earn okay so we might have the question you know how can i spend more than i earn what do you think so if you work you get x amount of money and that's what you spend but how can i spend more than i earn how can i do it so the the, the instruction is guideline is spend less than you earn which means Live within your means, right? But how can I spend more than I earn? What do you think? Can I actually do that? If I'm if I'm earning, let's say, ten thousand rupees in a month, how can I spend twenty thousand rupees when I don't have ten thousand in my hand? Yeah. Yeah, so how do I buy it? Hmm? Yeah, simple, borrow. Hey, I'll pay you back. You know, give me 10,000, I'll pay you back next month. Okay? So it's easy to borrow, very difficult to pay back. Right? Because you don't know what further expense that you will have the next month. Right? What sudden, you know, expenses that you might have. So, um, so the thing is to live within that means, right? So there are many people have made it very easy today. You know, companies, banks have made it very easy to, uh, if you have a good, you know, credit worth, they've made it very easy to borrow, right? Once people know that you have some kind of an income or whatever, people say, why don't you buy, get a credit card? It's easy. You just have to pay. You know so much and you get a credit card or you don't pay anything you know this is the credit card you use it and uh, people start spending it people start you know uh, using credit cards okay. Okay, somebody's mentioned here already okay check in credit card yeah. borrowing anand's typed by ordering borrowing so hope you're feeling better anand uh okay by borrowing money from friends etc okay yeah so Spend within your means. Okay, spend less than you earn. Now that's a uh, that's something um, that we need to discipline ourselves. Okay, because the thing is, the temptation is always there. You know, you see so many offers. 
like offers on clothes, offers on shoes, offers on phones. Uh, you know, so many things are there, right? And uh, and also the banks are also saying you get text messages from the bank saying, okay, zero percent, whatever interest. Uh, you know, your pre-approved loans and everything. So be careful. Okay, avoid the use of debt. That's the second thing. You know, debt is don't put yourself in a place where you owe. You know, because when you borrow, especially from a bank, when you use your credit card, right? It comes with what? Yeah. And it's a hefty interest, right? Um, credit card interests are, you know, it can go up to 30%, which means if you borrow, you know, if you're 100 and 100 rupees, for every 100 rupees, it's 30 rupees extra, right? It's, it's very high. Be careful. Avoid the use of debt. Build liquidity, which means um, build the ability to have cash on hand or accessibility of cash on hand. OK, so we are looking at this. Maybe some of us are saying, OK, we are students. We're not started earning. You know, how does this apply? Just remember this. Probably you can go back to the notes when you actually, you know, uh, start earning or using. But also, you know, I'm sure that you spend money. Right. So it's good to think about these like these things when you spend money. Okay, um, set long-term goals. What does that mean? That means that uh, you know, if you think about financial goals, we looked at that earlier. Think about long-term goals. Okay, twenty years from now, thirty years from now. Now that's faith, right? So you're saying, okay, God, you know, you want me. You you got an assignment for me. Ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, thirty years. So from then, from now till then, you know, what can I do with the money? Or can I have a goal saying, okay, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to reach this place of maybe savings or maybe investing, maybe even purchase. Right? It's not wrong. No. Every time we, we think that, okay, I think we've kind of dispelled that myth that talking about money is wrong, you know, using money. You know, God, God in fact, delights right, in, um, in giving. Uh, the believer he is a generous God, but it's all about whether we are holding on to God or is money holding on to us, right? So that's the thing. Okay. Um, also, believe that God owns it all. You know, we are stewards that everything belongs to him. You know, even if I have a business and I'm getting regular income or if I'm working somewhere, and I'm getting raise after raise and incentives, and I'm getting, you know, progressing in my career. Just remember that it's God, it's the Lord who has actually enabled this. He provides, right, in various ways, even through our employment. Right? And specifically when we talk about ministry and so on, He provides through those means, right? He provides through those vehicles, through those avenues, right? Never forget that. Okay, so goals. Okay, so we, we looked at that. What about our lifestyle? Does the Bible advocate a certain lifestyle? Okay, uh, for a man or a woman of God, what do you think? So, and if, if so, what kind of a lifestyle regarding money, finances, material things do you think the Bible talks about? What, what could you say, okay, let's say pastor, this is the lifestyle he or she should have. Somebody is in ministry, this is the lifestyle. So when you say lifestyle, what are we talking about? Sorry? Um, lifestyle like Jesus, okay. <laughs> so what is it like? So in today's terms, you know, what is it? mean and how does it how do you think uh, online students also you can contribute right? um, regarding our yeah finances so what would you think should be an appropriate lifestyle for a bill yeah go ahead uh, you want to use the mic you can uh, for me I feel the appropriate lifestyle as a Christian that's uh, in terms of financial stewardship would be that uh, first we should be uh, we should earn 
the, we should have basic uh, basic income for us in order to survive in order to you know uh, pay clothes you know take care of our basic take needs, our basic needs. Mm. you know another reason why is that uh, once we have this financial stability that uh, we can go we can go out and we can preach to others rather and um, we can help them out once mm. if we have the financial stability then we can help people out in need if you don't have the stability and just go preaching there's very very little, little we can do in that uh, aspect mm. Okay. Another so thing is yeah. we become an example for others. Our lifestyle is ref- is a reflection on us, uh, how we are, who we are. Okay. So we consider all these basic guidelines. Okay. So scripture talks about living with our means, living with contentment, godliness with contentment is great gain. Okay. Don't uh, the love of money leads to all kinds of evil. So we have these principles. So use those principles. Okay, it's because when you when you look at different scenarios, okay, let's say an urban setting, you might not think twice about you know riding a bike, okay, riding a bike or using a bike for commute. It's fine, but let's say you just move from an urban setting into another setting. Maybe it's very rural, where maybe one or two people use the bike. maybe the head man of the village uses the bike the panchayat leader has a bike okay so you get you get this thing it's very relative but we can only so we can't say i can't go by bike right being god being content and godly is i should walk or i should use the bus so i can't say that the only thing we can go by is these guiding principles that is laid out in scripture and we have of course the spirit of god telling us hey what you're doing is right or what you're doing is wrong so we are led by the spirit of god we are led by these principles uh, or we have these guiding principles in scripture so we go by that okay so our lifestyle depends on that okay so when we say extravagant you know wasteful we need to again think about it is it wasteful is it extravagant okay can i spend so much to take my family on a holiday okay so you're thinking i'm in ministry should i do it i'm in ministry you know should i so you you think about this if you feel that okay i i just need to you know uh, this person george verver who recently passed away anybody knows george verver no okay um he, he wrote a very wonderful book about uh, not lots of book actually about missions and i remember reading it as a as a young man who came to you know bangalore and uh, i remember picking up that book uh, of uh, the revolution of love and justice and and many other books okay so he he in fact started this whole movement called operation mobilization om he recently passed away he always wears a jacket with a world map on its back you know it's like the whole jacket is like world map saying world missions right so so that guy known for you know very austere living very simple living okay so for his wedding people gave lots of gifts wedding typically you know wedding reception newly wed so they gave a lot of gifts. so he he and his wife decided that they will pack some in a suitcase the rest of it they wanted to give it away to charity okay so that's their choice they said okay people have given so much one room is full of that gifts you want to give it away to charity okay so we can say oh that was very extreme right why should anyone do that people have actually you know friends and family have contributed out of their love and affection for us you know we should keep it but that was their dis- decision as a couple they said that's fine you know we understand that but this is what we value and this is what we want to do right it's fine right so he he spent his entire lifetime you know doing missions and and uh, doing uh, so many other uh, you know wonderful things for the kingdom of god and that was his choice on the other hand we might have some others who say okay i don't want to do that right i want to live in a comfortable place i want to do this but i want to i want to give away you know we don't know how much they are doing 
for the kingdom of God, how generous they are with, uh, you know, when it comes to money, when it comes, we don't know. So we cannot always judge by the external, right? We know that God watches, God knows the intents of our heart. So, so don't judge yourself also very, very harshly. Don't bring yourself under guilt and condemnation, you know, unnecessarily, where, where the Lord is not convicting. You know, you, we unnecessarily bring it. So have an understanding of, you know, the right understanding of God's view on money, which is what we are trying to do, right? And uh, live it out practically between you and God. Okay, so your lifestyle. Okay, so financial contentment does not having a does not result from having a particular lifestyle saying live I should live in such a place I should own these things contentment doesn't you ask any person right they will say I have all this but still something is missing right so so don't worry you know it, it's not about all the advertisements will say if you live here then you're somebody like if you wear these clothes then you're somebody if you own these things then you're somebody right that's what the advertisements say right but it's not it's not true people who are who think whom we think they are somebody say no it's it's actually nothing right okay borrowing in debt is borrowing a sin coming back to what do you think can i borrow borrowing and not repaying is definitely sin <laughs> i borrow from someone and i'm saying okay forget it it's definitely not on right? but but is borrowing itself a sin so the Lord says, if you have two tunics, give one. So what are you actually doing? Giving away. Yeah. And maybe, you know, maybe that person saying, I'll give it back. Right. And the, and the Lord used the parable, right, of the persistent, the, the, the what is it? Prayer of the persistent widow, right? Um, about, pr about praying with persistence, about going and borrowing food. He's saying, you know, he's going to the neighbor's house and saying, guests, has, guests have come, I need, you know, I need some loaves of bread. And he's asking. So he's, he's literally saying, okay, I want to borrow. So he's borrowing sin. Unnecessarily borrowing is? Okay. So, okay, let me rephrase my question. <laughs> Is borrowing bad? I'm not using the word sin. Is borrowing bad? No. Okay, so certain cases, you know, uh, there's a healthy way of borrowing and an unhealthy way. Okay, let's say you you want to build a house or something, or you want to purchase a land, and you don't have that kind of money, but you have, you know, you're working for some some company or something, and then you're getting this regular source of income, right? I'm sure people buy bikes, cars, based on that, saying, okay, EMI, right? Installments, monthly installment. And so I'm going to buy based on that. So it, it's a form of borrowing, right? It's a loan. You're, you know, you've got the one vehicle, and you need to make monthly payments. So, so borrowing itself is not bad. But we need to be very, very careful okay? because it can very quickly become bad. Very quickly. Right? So I, when I first got a credit card, I used to work with this company. I was in sales. I got this, this first job. You know, then they, they said, "Okay, you're a you're a oh, you're a manager." They're saying, "You know, we'll give you a card. You don't have to pay anything, sir. So just sign here, here, here. That's all. We'll get to give you the card." I was very happy. Just went about using the card and in my ignorance i thought if i could pay the minimum balance okay so after 30 days or 45 days you get a amount okay this is what you spent 10 things you spent on and this is the minimum thing that you need to pay for this month minimum balance you need to pay okay and that gets added over with the interest for the following statement which is after 45 days so i so i just thought hey I just pay the minimum balance. I completely forgot that there is an interest added to what you know. If, if you pay ten, if you if you if you you know uh, spend ten thousand, and the minimum balance comes to let's say thousand rupees, I thought okay, 
I'll just pay the minimum balance and fine, next month I can pay it. But for that 9,000 rupees, there is a interest that is added, which is every day. And so things became really tight. You know, it became very difficult. And newlywed, you have these expenses, you know, all those things. So it was very difficult. I was glad to kind of finish that the whole thing and come out of it. Very quick, came, came out of it and said, okay, I'm going to use this only where I need to, right? Maybe there is an online thing, some air tickets or some something where now it's become very easy. You can use GPay and phone pay and all that. So as long as you have money, you pay. Right? So, so that was the thing, right? So uh, we need to be very, very careful. So borrowing is not bad, but you think twice, thrice before borrowing. Also, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, like married couple, let the husband and wife be in agreement, right? Uh, about these kind of decisions because it's a big decision. Okay. Okay. Then um, so, something's about bankruptcy. Okay. This may not really apply in an Indian context. So, you know, the thing is, there are certain bankruptcy laws. What does bankruptcy mean? What does, what does it mean when, when you say somebody is bankrupt? Have nothing. Okay. There's absolutely nothing. When you say bankrupt, it means there's no money. In my savings, there's no money. It's completely gone. Okay, maybe you're in business and you say, it's gone bankrupt. I cannot pay back whatever loans the company bank has given. I'm done. Okay, So you just close thing. The bank also will might take away whatever assets you have, like furniture and you know building, whatever. They might take that. And that's it. You don't have to pay back. So, so you know, it's an unhealthy trend where people declare themselves to be bankrupt. They borrowed. They've not been able to pay back. They just declare saying, I'm bankrupt. Okay? So it applies for, for, for those kind of things. So, which means that whenever we, you know, the Bible is very clear that we need to pay back. You know, Psalm 37, 21 talks about that. It is, uh, well, let's look at that verse. Psalm um, Looking at Psalm 37, 21. Okay. Okay. What does it say? Uh, the wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. So the wicked borrows and has no intention, does not also. Like most of the times, you know, you you don't have any intention of paying back. And uh, so that is wrong. So when it comes to declaring bankruptcy, you know, that is the, uh, that's the thing. You know, when you declare bankruptcy. Okay, we looked at giving, right? We looked at tithing and giving and helping others, arms. We looked at that. Okay, what do you think of in investments? Investing your money, is it wrong? Huh? It's good. What, Francis? Good. <laughs> okay. So, so in, in the parable of the talents, the Lord, what does the Lord, um, I mean, what does the, the master ask each of them? What did you do with what I gave? Right? So, and, and, um, and the thing is, uh, he uses the word talents. Okay. What did you do with the, do with the talents? And each of them, answered what they did with it so they actually invested right? except the one who did not invested um, in order to increase why do you invest so that it will become bigger it will multiply more okay so there are tools or there are means by which we can invest okay so investment and savings you no know, both, both are different you know, when it comes to saving, when you put, put money in a bank, what happens? You get, what do you get when you keep money in a bank? Huh? It is safe. We get interest on it, right? So that's, that's one way of 
very, if you think about it, a simple way of investing. Okay, it is there in the bank, it is getting interest. But that interest is very small compared to other means. If you put money in a, let's say, a term deposit, what does that mean? A term deposit. Sorry? Certain amount you put in now. Keep on adding, is it? Okay, a term deposit is actually a substantial amount of money. Hey, just careful with this thing. A substantial amount of money which you which you which you put away. Right? It's like a, uh, it's like an account, but you put away in an account a term deposit. The term refers to the word term refers to the number of maybe months or years or whatever. So it's like a fixed deposit, a term term deposit, a fixed deposit. So you put it in a in a fixed deposit. You cannot take it whenever you want, right? If you break a fixed deposit, so because the term could be maybe two years, three years, five years, so you don't take it out. You keep it there. You put it there, and the interest is a compound interest. Okay, I'm not getting into the details of that. You know, the financial workshop, like I mentioned, you can get actually a lot of details there. So the compound interest is more, and when you get the money back, you get it with the interest. Okay. Um, now, there is also what is called a recurring deposit, which means every month you put away a certain amount of money. Okay. That also at the end of the year or whatever, you get something. So there are different ways of investing mutual funds. Um, well, high risk investments like the stocks and sh you know shares and stocks and so on. Right. Uh, I, I don't know too much about stocks and shares, but um, people do invest and it's a high risk, high return. Risk is high, return is also high. So these are ways of investments. So you see what works for you. Okay. So like people say, when, when is the right time to start investing? People ask the question, right? The answer is always yesterday, <laughs> right? It's not tomorrow, day after. When is the right time? Yesterday, which means start early. Start early, right? It's not that you are being selfish. It's a good way of stewarding the money that give. Definitely give, help people, you know, give to the work of the kingdom, help others. Think of saving. Think of investing, right? Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm sure there are many questions how, what, um, but you can attend the financial workshop for that, right? Okay. Work, retirement. Uh, we looked at work, that um, work, calling, assignment, everything goes together. So is work wrong? Um, no, because it's instituted by God. We have people right through scripture who worked with their hands. Okay? So then the problem happens when we say, okay, what if I'm called for a, a full-time, so-called full-time kind of ministry? So then what do I do? Right? Ask the Lord, Lord, is, it, is this something that you want me to do? Or do you want me to work, have a vocation, and then do ministry? Right? There are a lot of people who do that. So ask the Lord, be clear, and, um, and go for it. Okay. Um, okay, net worth. Net worth is um, the worth, financial worth of someone. Now it is it is a gauge. It is just a measurement, okay? To to uh, it's not a it, it's not to give anybody some kind of a big value or or identity. Okay, that's for sure. If the net worth is more, that does not mean that that person is greater than anyone who does not have a net worth. But net worth is simply all the you know all the assets that you might have. Assets meaning, okay, what are the material things that, that are there, um, the belongings that you have, the savings that you might have, all put together is the net worth. Okay, so, so that's just a measure. And it will help in planning things. Okay, it will help in financial planning. But it's never a, a measure of your value. Okay, just because your net worth is more does not mean that you are more valuable 
you're more valuable as a person. Okay, our value and worth as a person comes from the Lord. So we understand that, right? Okay. So is it okay to pay taxes? What do you think? Unreasonable taxes. The government is not doing anything with the tax that I pay. Look at the oh, now the road is good right in front of the college, but how how was it? You know, <laughs> election is next month, so roads are getting better. Anyway, praise God. But the thing is, you know, we, we have this thing, no? Like, government is not doing anything. Why should I pay? Right? And just think about the kind of government which was there in the Lord's time. Right? At least now there is some kind of an accountability, some kind of accountability. There it was nothing. They decide. They decide to kill a person, that's it. They can do what they want. Okay, so in such a government, the Lord said, take the coin, whose inscription is there? Pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, which means you know your taxes and whatever needs to go to the government, you do that. Okay, so income tax, any kind of tax, um, do that. Okay, and uh, it can be paid paid for. So also, uh, we need to know that when it comes to taxes, there are certain, you know, uh, different governments do that, different countries do this differently. Okay, so in India there are certain ways by which your tax amount can be reduced. Okay, so su suppose you have any government, suppose you um, invest, I mean, sorry, you save money in a post, post office. Okay, so, so if you're saving money in a post office, if you're, if you're saving money through any of these means, the government will reduce the amount of tax that you have to actually pay. Okay, so, Make use of that. There's nothing wrong in making use of that. Okay, life insurance. What is a life insurance? Suppose you die. <laughs> Suppose you die, okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay, so life insurance is a policy. And life insurance is something that is paid maybe once in six months. It's different things, right? Maybe some, some things are monthly, some are once in six months, some are once in once a year. So this is something that you, um, you I won't call it investment, but this is something that you pay so that in the event of an unlikely, let's say you pass away, you know, you're martyred, whatever, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> <laughs> you martyred for Christ. Okay, so so the thing is, your uh, whomever you nominate, okay, in the life insurance policy, you can say, okay, my wife, my child, you know, you nominate, they get the amount. So the life insurance can be, it can be a good thing. You know, life insurance might say, okay, ten lakhs, okay, but you need to pay monthly, maybe a small amount, right? And the amount that you pay during a lifetime need not be ten lakhs. It won't reach 10 lakhs. It may not, right? But in the event of you passing away, it can be a natural death also, natural cause. You know, you live up to 100, 120, and then you pass away, OK? Because you had a life insurance policy, because of you passing away, the other person, your family, gets it. Yeah, so they will take down cause of death, everything. So it's a, it's a good thing for the family. Okay, so these are ways by which we can actually practically steward our money. Okay, so, so this should actually open our eyes. OK, there are so many things. And these are ways I can actually use it wisely, use money wisely. Maybe I want to leave behind something for my family. This is something that can be done, right? OK, any questions? Life insurance. So is life insurance uh, an act of unbelief? Won't God take care of my family? What do you think? Huh? It's, it's a wise act. Yeah. But the thing is, like, you know, like other things, we can go, we can go either way. Because money can money has that thing, capacity, right? To control. Money gives false assurance. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Money gives False confidence. You can boast. I'll take care. Don't worry. Next year, I'll take care. That is, we don't know, right? What happens between now and next year? Right? 
So money gives that kind, money has that capacity to do that. False assurance, false confidence, and all that. Um, so the thing is, we we need to be careful not to be controlled by that, not to come under that, okay? not to trust in uncertain riches. By all means, make use of whatever is available. Right? By all means, be wise, be make use of it. If you re read through Proverbs, there's a lot of wisdom on saving. There's a lot of wisdom on using uh, you know, money rightly. There's a lot of wisdom there. Right? But don't be controlled by it. Don't let our trust be in. You know, one verse that we can always go to is 1 Timothy 6, verse 17. Yeah, I think we haven't read it in a while. Let's read it. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. First Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 70. So that's put that puts everything in balance, in perspective. Okay? So it says, command those who are rich in this age. Bank balance is good. I have so many things. Uh, all that is there. Command those. Tell them not to be proud. Because money does that to them. Wealth does that to them. Real estate does that to them. Command them not to be proud. Nor to trust in the things that they are actually proud of, which is the riches. Not to trust in uncertain riches. But in the living God. But look, look what he does. He gives us richly all things to enjoy. You see? So sometimes we go to either extreme, no? I don't want this. Whereas God is saying, you know, it's okay. You're my son, you're my daughter. I want you to live a good life. And we say, no, no, no God, I don't want. But the thing is this, not to trust in uncertainty. It's not to make an idol out of the blessing that he gives, but to put our trust in him. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, then the, the next thing is wealth transfer, meaning um, whatever we have uh, during a lifetime, whatever we have saved, you know, that we can leave behind or, or uh, leave behind as an inheritance for our family, for you know, children, children's children, right? So think about that. Is there something that I can, I can leave behind, I can actually transfer? Right, um, so think about that as well. Okay. And lastly, about training children. Okay. Now, growing up, I must tell you that we never discussed money in at home. Money and sex was never discussed. <laughs> so, whatever input was from the world that I got. Okay. But thank God. Everything gets got sorted out. But the thing is this, you know, if if we don't discuss, if we don't teach children, okay, then someone else will teach. If you don't teach from the word, they will be learning, but it may not be what they need to learn. You think look at your own life. Okay. Whatever you did not learn from the word, someone was teaching you. Either it could be one fellow who's sitting next to you, somebody, you know, some family member, somebody, they'll teach you something, they'll tell you something, and you're at a very impressionable age where you're thinking, wow, long hair is cool. That person must be saying something that is really, and that's it. You know, you're a teenager, and that's it. You know, so it's good to teach children, the, you know, especially about finances. Okay, at a right end, there's no, um, you, you don't have to think, okay, they need to become adults, they need to be 21, they need to be whatever. No, you can teach them at a young age. And I know of someone who does that, you know, every, um, this person, every Saturday, uh, it takes an hour to teach them about savings, investments, and, and so on, about generally about money, the right perspective about money. Okay. Um, so, and, uh, you know, the thing is, what is the, see, Bible says, okay, it's good, you leave an inheritance, 
But what if they don't know how to handle that inheritance? Okay. So the, the, the best thing, uh, I mean, the big thing is not in giving people lots of money. Sometimes we look at people, they're in poverty, and you say, you know, if I had a lakh, I would just give them that lakh money, and that will just change their lives completely. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You'll give it today, maybe by in a week, it'll be gone. It'll be gone. They would have spent it on all their needs, maybe debt, everything. It'll be gone. What then? Right? There is no knowledge, there is no wisdom on how should I handle this? It's like, you know, it's like giving an AK-47 assault rifle and putting it in the hands of a 10-year-old and say, use it wisely. <laughs> he just knows to aim and pull the trigger. Right? Yeah. Uh, so true. Give a man a fish, you eat for a day. Teach a man how to fish, then... You know, so that's uh, so this finan handling finances is also a um, life skill. Okay, so so don't shy away from it. Like maybe you know we might think okay, uh, we're almost about to close. So we might think okay, you know we are in Bible college and I, I, I want to become a pastor. I want to do ministry and and all all that is great. Right, that's fine. You know that's God given desire, but don't shy away from you know this thing. You know uh, of learning how to handle finances. Uh, what is it that I need to know about money? Because you're going to use it each and every day of ministry. Believe me, each and every day, every month, you will. There will be that thing to use it wisely, you know, right? And uh, when you have a Sunday service, maybe you're a pastor, you will have an offering time, right? Or you'll at least put an offering dabba there. Say, you know, on the way out, please put. Right? So what are you going to do with it? How are you going to do it in a way that does not bring dishonor to Christ? Right? Okay. I think that's it. We are done. Um, any questions? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Prince and then. Um, okay. Is it okay for... Uh believers to do finance business is it okay for believers to do finance business where uh, they give money for interest um can uh, believers do that one where they give money for interest, interest. as in like a, a lending yeah lending business right so because there are finance firms which actually do something else also right so so they're going to charge a high you're going to charge a you have Maybe a lakh or something, ten lakhs, and you're giving one lakh to each person, yeah, and, and you're you, going to charge some fifty percent interest on it, right? <laughs> you have to, you have to ask your conscience. Can I do that? <laughs> you know, but but the thing is this, you know, if there's an agreement, if you come to me and say, I ha I'll give you a lakh, but I want a lakh and fifty, or I want two lakhs when you give back, and I say okay, and I agree to it, then you. And I are in agreement. You have every right. It's a legal agreement. So you made me. You, you didn't tell me. I'll give you one lakh. And uh, at the end of the thing, whatever you want, you give me. I'll be okay. You didn't tell me that. You very clearly told me that it's two lakhs that is required. And I said yes. And I maybe signed the... Then you have every right to ask me. Even not even about interest, but uh, even if it's less interest, like... Uh, correct one only. Can I? Like not very too much. It's uh, right, right amount mm. of interest. General very less. Can we do it? Because uh, in in uh, I exactly don't remember the verse in scripture, but it was there in Bible. Like like if you give something, don't expect to take it back. Yeah. So if you let's say you are giving to uh, Vijay. And, uh, you know, Vijay is in a state where he's not able to pay. Don't do it. But if you're doing it as a, this is your business, this is your vocation, and you're charging a nominal amount, and it's within the legal things of the country that you're in, place that you're in, by all means, it is with that understanding that you actually give out. So even to Vijay, if you say, Vijay, Vijay, 
at the month at the end of the month i want it back which says okay shake hands so at the end of the month you have every right to ask him let's say after 15 days you feel in your heart i don't want anything back right and end of the month vijay comes and says hey actually i don't have enough here i have only 75% of it is it okay and you just tell him you just take it no problem that's fine right so okay we'll stop here in case there are any questions you're always free to email and uh, i'll try and respond to that okay okay so thank you um we come to the end of that session and this course this semester thank you online students but basically guys um there'll be a couple of um, one more online test and uh, i'll post it on the stream also for uh, in person yeah sure one more question oh yeah sorry sorry yeah yeah uh, pastor actually i have the same question what prince asked mm. but uh, i want to just say like wealth transfer na wealth transfer yeah. wealth transfer so it can be blessings for generations yes but if someone took uh, borrows money and all so it can be curse for the generations yes so like what bible says about that yeah so um, so the thing is this if you if you're going to be borrowing it's going to affect you it's going to affect your family right and uh, if you're gone then they are going to bear the brunt of it you're not going to be there but then they are going to bear the brunt of it if it's a legal you know um thing that is binding they're going to hound them go after them so be careful yeah so that's was what i would say unless there is somebody who says no problem i'll write off your debt you know but very rarely does that happen right so one needs to be careful yeah okay fine one more question no in this chapter yeah 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 so i i misuse money i repent hmm yeah because the, in the sense it depends right it you will see uh, the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy but the lord has come that we might have life and life in its abundance okay he is the redeemer which means that he brings us back from where we have fallen and takes us even further of course redemption talks about the fall and you know the consequence of the fall and so on so sometimes i i do this out of ignorance sometimes i do this intentionally okay so either i do it intentionally or out of ignorance i have to face the consequence it could be imprisonment it could be you know loss of property maybe in order to repay i have to face that earthly consequence maybe according to the law of the land that's a possibility but is god capable is he bigger than that mistake intentionally unintentionally absolutely is he capable of restoring absolutely so if we uh, lost a land when we ask god can he uh, restore back the land or uh, money that we have misused back yeah or will he uh, will he will he tell us like go work uh -huh. i will give you some opportunities work save and then see the restoration back. comes in many ways this restoration will come in many ways i'll just tell you quickly one thing okay how i i won't say lost okay now i don't know if i shared this because i forget which class i shared we we were you know we, uh, i think uh, this was this was many years ago you know i moved to bangalore started working you know me and my wife i think we had a baby no uh, i think yeah ruth was not yet born we were there we came to know about a neighbor who was in debt so bad that these guys were saying you know you sell your kidney and you pay back the money harassing them night and day 
so we came to know about their state through uh, other, the lady who was helping us, you know, house help. So he said, this is perfect. And then, and that girl actually used to come to our house. For my, my wife, Aarti, used to teach her some math and English and all that. So she used to. So we knew this one. We were thinking, poor thing, you know, what to do? Let's help. Uh, so we thought we'll ask our friends, get money and help them. Okay, And uh, whatever money we could. So then the Lord started speaking to me, why don't you give? You just give it. So I was actually, I got some money from the company uh, that I worked in, which actually shut down. So I was working in another company. So they gave a severance package. right? So I was saving it for to buy a second-hand car. I just thought, okay, I'll buy a second-hand car. Second-hand Fiat. I have in mind, you know what, second-hand Fiat. Because my wife was just, I think she was carrying, uh, expecting. So I thought it will be comfortable. I can buy a second-hand car, hospital visit and all that. So this is what. But the Lord said, oh, we're going to give it. So I was struggling. Is it me or is it God? <laughs> God, it can't be. Maybe it's me, you know, out of guilt and all that. Very clearly, the Lord said, give it. So the next day, I just went, withdrew all the money, okay, and kept some for whatever expense, put it in another thing. And they, they used to run a bank, bakery or something. So I went, so we, oh, then gave it. OK, after giving, maybe two weeks after that, they moved house. That's the last we heard. Till date, I don't know where they are. They didn't give back the money. They didn't get back to say, hey, we'll pay you back later. It was those days, it was big money for us. Right? Gone. But did the Lord restore that money? Many times over. But how did he do it? I still don't know. But he did it. Amazing ways he restored. So the Lord is a debtor to no man. Just always remember that. He's a debtor to no man. He says, you know, or in, in this case, I'm just, he instructed me to give, I gave. And I was feeling very cheated. You know, we want to help them. How can they do it? But, you know, I had to work with the bitterness and all that. But that's, he said, okay, fine, Lord, you know, you will. But the Lord restored many times over. I wanted to buy a second hand Fiat, which was not in the market. The Lord made sure that I bought a new car. Yeah. So I, so I was you know, still working and all that, but so the Lord made it possible. So the Lord restores. Okay, with that we end. Thank you so much. God bless you guys.